Hello. Uh, I thought I'd just show you a little bit of what I've been working on lately. Uh, it might be of interest to you if you like to do stuff for orchestra, uh, particularly if you're doing electronic music. Um, the thing that we're doing today is woodwinds and talking a little bit about quartal harmony as well. Uh, why that might be important, particularly for woodwinds with electronic music, I'll just play you an excerpt of something you're working on. So there's a lot going on, um, but in this track I wanted to change out my usual way of going about things, which is get a piano, get some strings, and have a good time. Um, and I decided instead to go with the more woody, reedy sounds. Uh, so we've got a lot of percussion things here. Marimbas and uh, celestes, xylophones, etc. And I needed something to match, so I reached for the woodwinds. Normally what happens when I reach for woodwinds when I'm doing electronic music is I play a few things on them for a bit, and I think, uh, there's, there's probably something better I could be using right now. Um, they don't generally fit when you just get them out of the box. However, I've been taking an orchestration course uh, at RCM lately, and I've learned a, few, a thing or two. It's been very helpful actually for this particular project. So I'm going to show you how to do something which is called interlocking voicing. Uh, it's particularly relevant for woodwinds because woodwinds as a section have very different sounding instruments. Normally with string sections, you know, all the cellos, violas, the violins, they all sound actually fairly similar tonal wise. Whereas with woodwinds, they vary quite a bit. We can use this to our advantage, but most of the time it becomes a hindrance because it's hard to get them to gel together. That's usually, though, because we're often writing for woodwinds as if we were writing for strings, and that's not what we want to do. So interlocking voicing is essentially where you nestle instruments between other instruments. I'll explain what that means. In a woodwind section, uh, you normally have two players per instrument, and there's four different instruments normally, uh, with rare exceptions. You've got flutes, oboes, clarinets, and bassoons. And so you've got two of each of those. And bassoons are the lower instruments, and the flutes are the higher instruments. And what you can do is build up a structure where you've got the second bassoon player playing the lowest note, and then you've got your first bassoon player playing, uh, say, an octave above or a fifth or something or whatever. But in between those, you nestle the second clarinet. And then above the first bassoon, you put the first clarinet. And then below the first clarinet, you could put the second oboe. And then above the first clarinet, you can put the first oboe. So that it kind of layers up like this they all kind of nestling underneath one another the effect of that is essentially that the whole section gels together in sound and it alleviates that problem which can happen where they all sound a bit disjointed and separate and just not very convincing as a section so here's an actual example of that you look at this sort of a chord and you, if you were to just play it on a big patch, it just sound like a chord happens there, another chord happens there. You wouldn't really be able to hear the voices actually moving. So the benefit of doing this sort of uh, voicing is you can have those big uh, splashy chords there where it's not super distinct. It's kind of vague. There's lots of notes going on but you can still hear the movement of the instrument. And that is how we can use those slightly different sounds per instrument to our advantage so that you can hear the lines 
uh, in the middle of the chord moving. So, as I say, it's like nestling instruments between instruments. So here I've got my bassoons. Bassoon 2 is the lower bassoon. Bassoon 1 is the upper bassoon. If I open the clarinet part as well, you'll notice clarinets are sort of nestled, concertinaed. So this is clarinet 1, this is clarinet 2, this is bassoon 1, this is bassoon 2. So they're doing this, essentially. And that goes all the way up. So you get this sort of sound. Glitchy audio artifacts are not a necessary result of doing this kind of voicing. Disclaimer. Um, so, yeah. Um, oh, I didn't talk about quartal harmony, did I? Quartal harmony is quite simple. Um, essentially, normal harmony, or just the harmony you're used to hearing, is probably tertiary harmony, where your chords are built up on thirds. If I get an instrument out, like uh, just piano... A normal chord would look like this. You start on the tonic, we call it. And you have your third, your fifth. That's tertiary harmony. Quartal harmony is when you build the chords on fourths rather than thirds. So a quartal chord would look more like this. It's got much more spacious sound and it, uh, yeah, it's a little bit more vague. You uh, get further away from that just regular boring sounding chord sound and you get more into ambiguous sounds. Like that, for instance. So that's quartal harmony and that's how I wrote these chords here. You can see these are all in fourths, uh, like there. Oh, they're all muted. If you just listen to solo bassoon. Fourth. Fourth. Wait. Yeah, that's fourth. So these are all fourth. Mostly. There's a little variation there to create some movement. but So that's how I built up these chords and how I voiced them. And uh, it's been Natus. I'll probably make a few more of these sorts of videos in the future. Uh, just little things that I often forget I even do um, when I'm writing projects and things like that. So stay tuned for more of this. And uh, if you'd like to know more about music theory and stuff, please visit my website. I've got some information there about lessons, uh, which I've been doing for the last sort of year and a bit. And they've been great fun and there's been lots of good progress going on. So do check that out. Anyhow, this is me and uh, I'll see you in the next one.